Hi, I'm Phil from Driftworks, this is my buddy Jay, and this is my M3 CSL, which I'm going to sell. CSL. <laughs> <laughs> nice. We've talked about that. <laughs> it just came to me. <laughs> so yeah, this is my 03, that sounds very American, doesn't it, saying 03? 2003. This is my 2003 M3 CSL, um, which I've decided to sell. Uh, first of all, I thought I'd give you a little bit of a reason why I'm selling it. And why I'm also thinking about selling a few other things. And I know what the internet's going to do. Guys, oh, going bankrupt, he's selling everything. <laughs> <laughs> I can assure you we're doing okay. Um, so yeah, as you can see in here, Jay and I built these storage ramps. Fantastic. Bit of a uh, mammoth job. But yeah, we've got now suitable amount of storage for 10 cars. It hasn't exactly solved the problem of space. Uh, in this building for us because a lot of people don't actually realize because I don't talk about it very much but we're a mail order business that side of the building the other building there is a mail order business and then here it's just the other side of the business it's for R&D and sort of the race team which we don't do much racing anymore uh, and all sorts of stuff like that it's full again it's <laughs> and my E30 M3 track car is a Gazes at the moment my 992 GT3 is at the front um, the trailer's empty though. The trailer's empty, yeah, that's one thing. So yeah, my big thing is, I never wanted to be a car collector. I never thought I'd ever be in a position to own more than one semi-silly car. Uh, and I'm very lucky, obviously, but it kind of bugs me that um, I don't drive for cars like I originally intended. Um, it's really difficult to do that when you've got so many. And it's also very costly to keep them maintained and insured. Um, and all sorts of stuff like that. And particularly things like the Impala, you can see in the distance there. It's down the back. It makes me super, super sad that such a beautiful car just sits at the back of my workshop, not being seen by anybody, which is why you may have seen it parked at Cafe and Machine for a few months, because I just really wanted to let people see the car. It's, it's lovely, so it makes me really sad. And the same thing goes for the CSL, really. It just doesn't get used. I find myself forcing myself to go and drive it. To, to choose that car over my other cars. Um, and I just don't think that's right. Somebody should, that's such an amazing car. Somebody should have that as their pride and joy. Um, it should be driven regularly, not sort of the sort of bottom of the rung type of thing that it is when, you, when you've got options. Options, yeah. Nice options. Um, yeah. And also mentally, it messes with my head because I've always got ideas about how to modify things, how to improve things, what I'd like to do to cars. So even one like that that's relatively standard and simple, I've just got these things that I'd like to do to it, like DCT transmission and things like that. And that's all what you got that I one just, for up there. Yeah, I just need to not not have things like that in my head when I've got long-term outstanding projects like the V10 M3, the 964 Turbo, the engine should be back soon for that. The Lambo's complete, pretty much, but there's still 10,000 things I could think of that I want to improve on it. And they're always in my head and I'm always worrying and it's not good for me. Uh, and the other thing is also something that was inevitable. I've had a kid and uh, I like her quite a lot. So um, my focus on cars and you know, I've not forgotten about cars, but you know, I care about other stuff as well. And uh, the introdu introduction of Hannah has kind of changed my way of thinking a little bit. Um, so yeah, I'm thinking, I'm going to sell the CSL because I rarely use it and as I say I kind of end up forcing myself to choose that over other ones. I'm battling whether to sell the 9972 GT3 because that car means a lot to me. It was a big milestone for me to buy a car like that. I've got a lot of love for it, a lot, a lot of good memories in it, but I'm really struggling with having a 992 GT3 and that and thinking well, when am I ever going to choose to drive that? I haven't quite decided, but I might sell it and let somebody else love it. Um, well, my parlor I'm thinking about, I can't, I kind of probably can't bring myself to do it because it's, it was my wedding car, um, a lot of fun. Again, it's always, it's, there's stuff that I want to do to it all the time and it doesn't matter how much I try and switch off, it's always there in the back of my head. 
All right, six, I think I'm gonna sell as well. I'm gonna basically just admit defeat and become SUV man, because you know, I'm pretty <laughs> old now. I'm gonna buy a, a KM Turbo S or Turbo, um, sort of a relatively modern one that will allow me to tow up to three and a half ton because this only tows up to two, two, I think it is. Yeah, 21, it's fine for a lot of my cars, but if I wanna get a big trailer that does um, all of my cars, including the Lambo, it has to be a flatbed, it has to be heavier, and it pushes me into a different category of towing weight. And that, I guess then, makes me point at this, because this rig here, my Chevy Silverado um, 3500 HD, and my big Pace America trailer, we have used what? Once this year? Once this year. Once uh, last year? Once this year, um, no, maybe twice this year, to do the Lambo, twice. We took it to the photo shoot in it. And then um, the previous year. We picked it up from Gaz's in it. Yep. And that's it. And uh, as I said before, we're really struggling for space next door. The actual main part of the business that makes the main bit of money, we are really struggling. It's a five and a half thousand square foot warehouse. And essentially we've got another 5,000 square foot warehouse here that's just filled with cars. And that space in particular, we've got, uh, day after tomorrow, we've got two 40 foot containers arriving at nine o'clock on the same day. Uh, we've got nowhere to put stuff. I'm gonna have to park that out of the way. Um, the whole rig, find somewhere else for it whilst we unload two containers and then it'll probably take a few days to unload. So I won't bore you with any more of the details with it, but that's, I hope you can kind of see some of my logic of this. Um, it kind of just feels like a little bit of a, of a waste and a shame to have stuff sitting there. And like I say, I never wanted to be a car collector. I like buying cars and improving them and driving them. And I feel like I've kind of, it's all been sort of spread quite thin um, amongst a lot of my cars. And some of them I definitely love a lot more than the others. So yeah, anyway, onto the CSL. It's cheap, don't worry. It's cheap, <laughs> it's a good deal, yeah? I do you a good price, mate. <laughs> no, it's, um, this car is probably, I'd just describe it as a driver's CSL. It's not the one that you buy that's low mileage, low owners, um, collectors, full collector's spec. It is still a collector's car, but it's the one that you don't need to worry about it because it's got 97,000 miles on the clock. I think I'm the sixth or seventh owner. Um, it's had uh, engine rebuild by Munich Legends and it's had the back end reinforcement done by Reedish Performance. Um, it's had paint, like on most panels that I can tell, I've just had the front bumper done and the flippers re-lacquered. But it's a super lovely looking car. Um, you can find flaws in, I don't know whether every panel, but if you get real You probably can stuff, if you get real picky. Yeah, if you're gonna look at this like a concourse spec, it's not car for you not even slightly there's an example so we've got a bit of lacquer, lacquer on the lift roof. is that on the roof, i mean yeah. the roof looks really good for compared a, to some but, but yeah it's it's but yeah it's definitely got flaws in that um but, 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 but you you've just cleaned this for me yeah so yeah a there's a little, little chips little on the and things like that the bonnet's got some stone chips oh there's one here so there's yeah that's one, one of the worst two. one to be fair yeah tiny little bits there um, you get the idea. It's like if you, it's probably what you describe as a five footer. Like, yeah, like, maybe not even that. It's, like, it's good from this distance, you know. Like a meter yeah, is good. It's, it's super lovely. The paint looks absolutely lovely. Um, and the wheels look really good. Um, but yeah, as I say, it's not the car that has been restored fully and then just parked in someone's heat insulated, perfect. Garage. It has been dry stored most of its life with me. Um, so yeah, I guess, have a quick look at the interior. One of the good bits on a CSL. Again, sort of used, but in relatively good condition. Back seats are a bit. Yeah, the back seats have that. Yeah, on the rubbery coat, can I guess? Coat or rubber, yeah, it's like a rubbery coating, yeah. isn't it? I probably can. Oh. Yeah, just stuff like, oh, that's cracked as well there, didn't notice that, but there you go. Yeah, I think it's quite common on all cars of this age, isn't it? That have that coat in, it just sort of falls off. Yeah. Uh, and I think the steering wheel was reconditioned at some point, so it's really good. Um, in really good nick. And yeah, was it 97? Is it yeah, 97,000 miles. Yeah. Um, it's had 
a so what have we done to it here first of all i guess i've done gearbox pump i remember doing that the gearbox pump which is that aftermarket one so yeah um, Berg, Berg, Berg Berg or something, yeah, something it? like that and um new clutch and flywheel while we're there as well we did do that. and new rear discs and pads new rear wheel bearing on the driver's side new drive shaft on the driver's side at the back jay did all of this so i should probably point at him uh, what else have we done? Well, I'm out of things now. Oh, no, done, yeah. people, people just want to see your pretty face. Yeah, it's been a while since we've been a video together, isn't it? Um, it's got massive Alcons on the front, and they're in. The discs are. Yeah, they don't feel like they've got any lip really at all. The calipers have been like this since I owned it, and the guy who um, I bought it off, a friend of mine, Mark, they've got this. It's very hard to see in some places, but it's like they reacted to heat at some point or something but yeah the massive six spot alcon calipers it's all bills being suspension as well oh yeah bills, what, oh, is it pss9 10 probably 10, I don't yeah. Know, yeah. I, I, I can't remember to be honest but yeah yeah um selling with the plate i think that cost me about a thousand quid there you go that's the honk maker <laughs> the um yeah oh, the noise this thing makes absolutely incredible absolutely incredible uh so the engine has had from looking at the invoices which i'll probably show you in a minute uh, munich legends have rebuilt this there's a invoice um in the box for about seven thousand three hundred quid or something yeah it's a brand new cams from bmw proper csl ones yeah uh complete set of rocker arms yeah um yeah, it's obviously had a head gasket at that point because the head was off. Yeah. This was 2017. It's not going to be many miles ago, to be fair. No, because Mark, who I bought it off, did next to nothing in it. And I've, yeah. I bet I, you haven't even done a thousand miles, have you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, it probably, the reality is you're probably actually right, which, yeah. is, a, which is a real shame. It's Absolutely had uh, ridiculous. new shells in the bottom, new yeah. rod bolts. Yeah. New sump gaskets on the invoice. Yeah. Yeah. So a big old bill, a big old bill for, yeah. um, to be done properly, basically. So, do you know what? Did it say what mileage that was when that was done? I, I didn't see it. Like, like you say though, if yeah. it's done, if it's like two, three thousand miles, four thousand miles since miles, then. Yeah, if yeah. it's done that, I'd be surprised. Yeah, so you're good anyway. You don't need to worry about it in theory. Um, what else is there to show you? It's modifications. That's it, isn't it? Suspension brakes and, and brakes. Yeah, that's it. I think that's it. Yeah, it's got a brand new proper CSL back box on it, or as good as new. Stickers yeah. still on it and everything. Did Mark buy that? No, no. Go yeah, there you go. We'll probably just get it up on the ramp, shouldn't we? Yeah, We've yeah. got an empty ramp for a change, which yeah. is quite unusual, so we might as well just stick that up on the ramp and you can have a look at it. Excuse Where the, are we? the ghostly apparition. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, underneath here, it's had a uh, Riddish performance, Riddish Motorsport. Can never remember which one it is. We can see up here quite yeah. clearly. But there you go. Like it's had. Up there. Yeah. It's Subframe had, reinforcement has been done. Yeah. Proper proper job. Uh, the so you've got the trailing arms and the knuckles and stuff. They look crusty as anything, but they're solid. It's the same as the ones that we had on the V10 M3. Uh, and the back plates as well for the discs. They look a bit scabby, but you know it's not structural stuff. A diff as well. It's, it's works fully well. It's a twenty-year-old casing at the end of the yeah, day. Yeah, exactly. Um, and you know, short of, I just wasn't. I wasn't in the mood for doing another what we did with Vitten really. And I'm sure you weren't either. Were you? I was not. <laughs> but it doesn't need a lot of attention because all of the the body stuff has been done. There's a few little bits that I just point out. Uh, I just spotted one here, so yeah, they just need, they're not crusty or anything, as far as I know, they're, they just need a bit of attention, bit of a squit with something oh, yeah, down the seam there, so yeah, I would just do the middle of the car with some, some of that rust sealer stuff that we've had from dinner troll or something. We don't know it absolutely inside out, but also the front looks to be um, really good, it's had lower arms, front lower arms on it at some point, the knuckles are a bit scabby again. The brakes all look in good condition. Um, I don't even know what. There's not that you can you. see, is it? Yeah. I mean, all the all the yeah. under trays are there, all the trims are there, all yeah. the arch liners are there. Yeah. 
Um, and yeah, the exhaust's in good condition. As you said, the back box, I think, is, is a brand new, genuine CSL item because they are different. I think they're lighter or something. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there you go. That's the underside of a 20-year-old M3 CSL. I mean, compared to some. Yeah, we have seen a few. Craig's seen a few next door, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is um, not a bad You could one. almost call this a minter. Yeah. I wouldn't, because I'm too particular. But <laughs> like I say, it's part of the reason why I had no problem enjoying the car and just cracking on, putting minimal miles on it. But yeah, just I've done, did I do two or three track days in it? And yeah, you must have, yeah. Brilliant, brilliant tool, a lot of fun. Sounds amazing, works really well. SMG is, you know, lots of people say it's crap. I actually think it's all right and adds, adds to the character of the car. Some people do manual swaps, that's cool, but I don't think it's a CSL anymore if you do that. DCT swap on the other hand. Isn't that exactly the same thing? No. <laughs> so, service history. It has some, it has a massive gap though, um, which I don't know, that may be the reason for it having to have an engine so rebuild. Or main dealer at this point. Yeah, they? but their main dealer, and then this one is 35,000 miles in, I think that says 06, and the next official service by um, a BMW dealer is at 77,000 miles. So that's a massive gap. It must and have been done eight by. eight years. Yeah, it must have been done by independence during that, that period. There's no way you could have it unserviced for that long. Okay, eight years. I mean, there's no, there's nothing, nothing in the paperwork showing anything else, is there? But since then, so that is in 14 at 77,000 miles, and then Premier Motors in Aberdeen, that's 15, and then Mark had this one done at Reedish, didn't he? Yeah. So that's 95,000 miles. So that's how much I suck at driving it. 3,000 <laughs> miles in two years. Yeah. So um, yeah, Reedish have done an oil service and filter on it at 95,000 miles, and I'm pretty certain I've done one as well um, on this car uh, with TWS proper oil and filter. So yeah, there you go. That's kind of another hint to the price that I'm going to tell you because I want for the car because the closest one that I can find uh, for sale at the moment, I'm not sure if it's even still for sale, is a was it 43,000 miles on the clock? So it's considerably different to this, but it's 85 grand um, that's up for. Other one is a price on application, which is a sign of when cars go absolutely mental. Or just like, overpriced. That's so annoying. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> price on application is like the most annoying thing. So anyway, let's get to the point. I think that everything factored in with this car, everything that I know about it, it's, you know, weird bits of little bits of paint here and there, the underside needing probably, I don't know, if you're particular, spending a grand on it, um, doing it yourself, maybe a little bit more if you get somebody else to do it. Price is 50k. I think it should fly at that price. I think that they are now at the point where everybody knows what they're going to be and what they're worth in many years. Uh, and if you just want a driver's car, you can have loads of fun in and just use as much as you want. And at the very least, you will get your money back for it at the end of the period that you want to own it. Probably make quite a substantial amount of money on it. This may be the car for you. So, um, yeah, enough waffling. Um, I'm going to, if, you want to, if you're interested, drop me an email at shop at driftworks.com. The car is nothing to do with Driftworks and it's my own personal car, but I just need a little bit of a line of defense, a little bit of a filter because I'm not really interested in uh, talking to loads of dealers that want to cut me in half on the price or anything like that. I don't really have a great deal of patience for um, <laughs> selling cars. So yeah, I'll filter out anything that I consider serious and I'll get back to you on my personal email. Uh, and that's probably about it. Um, Thanks for watching. If you got this far, we should probably get back to filming and editing something more fun. More <laughs> exciting, yeah. <laughs> Unless you want to see more things for sale, because yeah, like I say, yeah. I, am, I am seriously considering selling GT3, the 3500 HD, the trailer and the RSX. So 
Yeah, and um, maybe we'll do more for sale videos. Come get some, yeah, come <laughs> yeah. get some. I just turned into Richard Rawlings, haven't I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I hate car sales people. Sorry to everyone that's a car sales person, but um, yeah, fine line of tolerance for that sort of Let me uh, check your shoes. Yeah, yeah. Not pointy I, enough. I don't have big shoes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a big watch, so yeah, no. there you go. All right, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.